everyone and welcome to the first part of four videos. Um, here today with Clink and two shots and a pint. I have the lovely Gail Sotelo right in front of me. She is a WSET Advanced Level Certificate Awardee for Wines and Spirits. And Gail is a good friend and a very much respected individual in this industry. So I'm really happy to have you here, Gail. Thank you, thank you. And I'm so excited to be here because I I like working with like-minded friends um, who also are very, very much into wine. Great. So our first topic for today um, will be wine and pricing. I think it's a great first topic. A lot of people I know who want to start their journey in wines and appreciating wines and drinking wines always find this first step the most tricky part because wine is not a cheap hobby. It is also not the most expensive, but it's a very enjoyable hobby. And to get you started on the right track, you need to, first of all, enjoy every sip that you have. And of course, it comes to choosing the right bottle, choosing either a cheap wine or an expensive wine and knowing why they are so different in prices. And I hope with your expertise, you'll be able to shed some light today on that topic. So for me, one of the most common questions that I get asked is that why should I pay for this much when I'm purchasing a certain bottle of wine? The way that I would like to explain it very, very simplistically is that you can think about wine pretty similar to luxury items like cars or like you know, fancy bags or jewelry. The more rare the wine tends to be, of course, there's going to be a corresponding price tag for that. The more difficult it is to produce, the more expensive it's going to end up being. And you also have to take into consideration the materials used, especially for wine, we're talking about the grapes. So there are grapes that are more expensive versus other grapes. So that would also play a factor when it comes to the price of your wine. So that being said, from that alone, I hope that it will allow people to like not be so intimidated by the price tag, but really appreciate why some wines are priced the way they are versus others. There are a few factors that do affect wine pricing. So for example, you also have to take into consideration rather the vineyard where it comes from because there are two factors there. You have the land and the labor. For perspective, some people ask me, right? And I, I don't know if you have it on your menu, but there is such a thing called cava, which is a Spanish parking wine. And then you have your champagne, right? Some people are right. saying, why is something so expensive versus a cava? But if you think about it, the land alone, and I'm quoting like in a very old prices now, I know, I know I have to be able to like you know, update this, but like at a certain point, cava per square meters is about like 18, 18 euros per square meter to be able wow. to like, you know, yeah, right? So it's, it's inexpensive versus that of champagne, which is about almost 40 euros per square meter. So there's a huge price difference in land alone and this land of course is where you plant the grapes so it will drive up the price of your wine. In terms of labor, one of my students before said that, oh labor but that's gonna be cheap right because the more people that you hire it's gonna be cheap. Yeah, it works for certain countries from countries that do produce wine. It will end up being a little bit more expensive because manual labor in those parts of the world tends to be a little bit more expensive. So what does that mean? The more hands-on people tend to be, when it comes to producing a particular bottle of wine, it will end up being a little bit more expensive. So that's how it works. The more that they would end up using machines, the more inexpensive it will tend to be. Just to give a quick perspective, 18 euros would be about a thousand pesos, right? And yeah. then 40 euros is more like 2,500. So that's almost yeah. more than double. So yeah. yeah, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay, and that's thank for you. land alone. Yeah, that's yeah, for land just alone, land. right? Yeah, and then you're also looking at the winery as well. You have two things to look at there, the equipment. And I always take away oak as a different entity itself because we're talking about equipment in terms of, of harvesting machines, for example, right? So right. Um, again, as I mentioned a while ago, the more that there is a machine intervention to it, the cheaper it tends to be. So for example, how does the machine work anyway? When they when you use machine harvesting devices, what that does is that it will indiscriminately get the grapes 
which means that it will not stick whether or not it's ready, whether or not it's ripe enough or good enough or in terms of quality, right? It's not the, like, you know, be as discerning versus a person that's going to manually take the grade. So you have to consider that as well. If you have higher tech equipment, it will drive down the price. Some people, you know, find that fascinating, but again, it does have something to do with the labor component, right? So another right. example is in Champagne, they do a uh, riddling. What that does is it allows the yeast that has been settling from the bottom of the bottle to go all the way up here slowly right. to be able to do its work in terms of the secondary fermentation. But of course, you want to get rid of that. And normally, riddling as a process is a little bit of a lift and a quick. Yeah, so if yeah, it's correct. people doing that manually, it tends to be much more expensive versus having a riddling machine, right? It looks like a big giant yes, box yes. and then all the bottles are tilted upside down. Then that tends to be cheaper because you can do it right. faster, significantly faster. The other thing that I was planning to talk about was the oak. Because some people kind of have um, a tendency to think that, oh, it's an oak barrel, so like whatever, right? It's, they don't understand that an oak barrel is so expensive to produce, which is why some people, instead of maturing the wine in an oak barrel, they would choose to mature it in a steel barrel, but with little yes. oak chips in it. Having said that, the oak chips will be much, much cheaper to produce. So that will also play a factor into the end price of your bottle. Apart from the things that you will see from the vineyard and the winery, you would also, uh, the business side. And this is something that you would be very interested in, Selena, because you also have your own store now, which I'm excited about. There are things that you have to take into consideration. Taxes for wines are different per country. Like, if I buy a specific wine here versus if I buy it in Hong Kong, for example, where they don't have importation taxes for wine. It's going to be considerably cheaper if I buy it from yeah. Hong Kong. Some of the people ask me why is champagne or sparkling wine in the Philippines so expensive because the tax bracket for sparkling wine in the Philippines is more expensive than for still wine. So just for perspective. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's great tips and that's really good to know yeah. because I don't think a lot of people know this. We know we get a tax for, say, tobacco because it's yes. considered a luxury product. And I think yeah. the idea behind it is also to drive down the usage of tobacco without banning it. Yeah, I can imagine that for liquor as well, they have similar yeah. procedures, but I would never have thought, so you've just taught me a new thing, that bubbly yeah. would actually be taxed higher than still wine. Yeah. It, it's pretty recent. I think, if I'm not mistaken, it started happening in about 2016 or 2017. That's when they started doing that. I, I remember the champagne that I would buy for about 2,100 pesos at one point. I now have to buy it at about 3,000 pesos. But of course, I will nice. because it's beautiful stuff, right? It's champagne. You can right, never go right. wrong with champagne. So there. Right. Um, I also think that there's a little bit of an idea behind it because it's also used for celebrations. And yeah. so people tend to splurge for their celebration. So again, another way for someone to make money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is that. And yeah, I think that's the reason, to your point, right? It's used for celebration. So people think that it is such a luxury item. I think the government found that it is for much, much more for luxury purposes. Hence the reason they tax it significantly higher as opposed to still one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it says so much about how we drink and enjoy wine in our country. Each country has their own traditions and their own yeah. way of appreciating liquor and i think in the philippines we're just really starting to enjoy wines more thoroughly at one point it was only the first five percent of the philippines really enjoying wines and spirits but now a wider range of people are enjoying i think there are more accessible wines now in the country oh, yeah. so people have you know access to cheaper bottles and, and can try more variety from different countries and I think we're really growing our palates to enjoy more of these oh, yeah, uh, other sure. world specialties. Yeah, for sure because I remember I started working in hotels in uh, 2004. You know, my guests before would be all about, oh, can you just give me red, can you give me white, make sure it's sweet. So those are the three things that I would constantly hear from my guests and I think 
over time as I evolved, as they evolved, as everyone evolved. Five years after the fact, oh, I want a Cabernet Sauvignon, oh, I want a Merlot. So they're beginning to start expanding their vocabulary and now people are beginning to understand whenever I talk to people about what I do for a living here, the country people say like, oh, I like Merlot. They already have a preference. It's so exciting. Right. <laughs> so yeah, so there. And I'm sure you've encountered that in your store as well. Speaking of travel, by the way, one of the reasons why some prices are the way they are for wine is also the travel that it took. So the farther it came to be able to like, you know, get here, the more expensive it will tend to be. But if you buy wine at the same level from say France versus from the US at the same level, because what will tend to happen is the one from France will, will travel a little shorter versus the one from the U.S. So that will yeah. end up, the one in the U.S., apples to apples, will be a little bit pricier. So we're talking about the same quality, same manufacturing procedure, same mm-hmm. rate, if we, if we do it that way. So, you know, it'll tend to be a little bit more expensive if you're considering purely the travel of that. Oh, Napa Valley yeah. wines anyway are already more expensive than most wines to begin uh-huh. with. But then yeah. here in the Philippines and enjoying them here is really pricier, you're right. They do travel yeah. further. The other thing, you know, people would always ask me, why does the packaging of your wine tend to also dictate the price? Now, one of the things we have here today is a something from, from the Rioja region. The thing is, if you look at the back of this, it requires a sticker, a very specific sticker that does come. I know you have one too. This is by law in Rioja. They cannot produce something and call it a Rioja without this particular sticker over here. In order for you to be able to apply for something like this, you have to pay for that, right? If you're a winemaker, you have to pay for that to be able to be considered a Rioja. And you already have to pay for this, and then you also have to pay for this. It looks like, you know, for us, like, it's so easy, it's like nothing, right? But it does also drive up the price in a certain way. So that's right. also a factor to consider. If you've seen the older so packaging, the, the more, we put it under packaging. Yeah, we put, it, we put it under packaging as well. Especially if you've seen the old tiny looking bottle bottles as well. That one, the picture of everything that is driving up the price as well in terms of packaging because there is a standard for them to be able to like you know put the label here it has to be like you know if you're for example an omedo right you're supposed to be like putting yeah. it in this particular portion so that matters as well and of course very very basic exchange rates also matter again if i buy this from spain or like if i buy the spanish bottle shall we say from france if I'm in France and I bought this bottle, it'll come off cheaper because the exchange rate is like the same because we're both operating on euro versus that so if I have to like buy it from here. So that's another factor that does drive right. the price. Pretty much why we pay for certain amount for certain bonds. So, Great, yeah. that was a lot. So to recap, if I'm a good student, <laughs> you, you are, I have faith in you. <laughs> I took notes, so let me know if I got this right. So. We have number one, land, so the area where it's grown. Two, labor, so the people involved or the machines involved will affect the price. The oak or the aging process, as you mentioned, it could also be steel vats, which drives down the price. Mm -hmm. And then taxes, so each country has their own taxes, so it changes again the prices for each wine, especially like bubblies in our country are more expensive. And then travel time, so the further, of course, a wine is from where you are drinking it, then you have to imagine yeah. how time it took to get there and all the ways and different transports it must have taken to reach your table. Yeah. And last but not least, of course, is packaging. Bottlers have to invest in certain qualifications, certifications, and standards for each region where the wine is grown. And of course, yeah. they have a certain packaging that they have to follow based on each region. Yeah. So. So good. So we have one, two, three, four, five reasons yes. why wine is priced differently. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Gail. I learned so much. <laughs> and I'm so happy to share it with people here in Davao and our guests and clients of Clink. If you want to know more, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and check out our website. It'll appear right here. And of course, 
Hang on because we still have episode number two and Gail will be right back to give us more information about wine, drinking and appreciation. Thank you everyone. Bye.